Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to continue to take a look at laying out uh, components or objects with a tile because we forgot something. So we looked at that the last time. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. Uh, these things, by the way, were laid out with a tile. So was this. This was laid out with a tile. And we've just been laying out things with a tile and uh, a recent mobile one. Let's see. Show you. And slash hmm, robots like that. So this is called Odd Robots. Uh, right, let's produce this music. Down below here, all this stuff was laid out with a tile. This is a tile of three columns, but this one right here is actually a tile of two columns and two rows. So tiles within tiles. <clears throat> Um, some of the things we forgot, if we go to the docs, there's all sorts of things to relate to the tile. Tile. Um, we got through the first batch of parameters there. If you set a width, then you can um, also resize to a width. So you can spread things out across a width and spread things out across a height as well. You can squeeze. So I want to show you some of the responsive things. And also when we took a look at call size, row size, I forgot to tell you that you can specify different call sizes and row sizes. And that would be done in a somewhat tricky manner using a series and the ZIMV values. So uh, that's why we thought we would put in a second, a second explore. Count, by the way, is if you want to tile things and then not go all the way to the end, but have uneven amount in the last row, then you can specify a count. All right, scrolling on down here, one of the methods is called a resize right there, where you pass in a new width and height, and that will adjust various um, other things as well, such as the spacings and squeezes and all that kind of stuff. All right. So one of the links here is called tile right there. So we're going to open that up. How do I open that up in a new document? Copy link, open link, a new tab. OK, that's perfect. So we'll pull this tab off, and we can do the responsive stuff. There we go. So we're squeezing this. So as you can see, the tile gets bigger and smaller as we resize. So on a resize event, we're resizing the tile, basically. There's also this thing called squeezing. So now we're going to squeeze this. So as that goes away, huh? click. So what happens is um, you see how the top row is squeezing? OK, and then it opens up, and then it squeezes together. So those are moving independently. Indeed, if we had no spread, you can also see it there. That's uh, squeezed and centered. There it is, left aligned. <coughs> And you can see now that the columns are no longer lining up. So that's an effect of squeeze. All right. OK. So that was one thing. And now what I want to do is work with you a little bit on making uh, columns of, of different sizes. So we'll go to the editor on Zim here. And we'll just uh, clear this and do a test. OK, so let's make together another tile. I think the last time we made a new tile, and it had uh, some objects in it. And so we'll do that again. And we had a new, um, what was that thing called? A stepper. And we scaled that a bit. Ska 0.7, make that smaller. Then we also had a new button and a new label. That, let's put the stepper in the middle. I can't remember what we had last time. But there we go. And then continuing on with the tile parameters, it's the number of columns. So that's three, one row. And we'll set a spacing of 30 or something like that, and zero because it doesn't have any vertical spacing, and then true to make it unique. And we'll not center that on the stage. OK, so it's off by a little bit because we should align this thing. So we'll set a style to do align. We don't have to align with style, but we may as well. Equal to, and we'll align in the center. 
and we will be align the align in the center as well. Test route there. <clears throat> okay, uh, we can also set the column width, call width, colon 300 or 400, 400, comma, and do a test on that. Ah, that's not it, size, call size, it's also a row size. Uh, there we go, a bit too much, 300, and test. It would be interesting to see, so what we want to do now is try different row sizes if we, or call sizes if we want to, and how would we do that? Uh, it would be nice if we could see how big the columns were, which I suppose we can kind of do if we make a new tile in here behind, new tile. We have not set it so that you can get background colors of the tile. The only way to get background colors of the tile would be to add rectangles into the tile, which then starts affecting the number of items in the tile. You can't loop through the tile and it just becomes very awkward. So uh, that's where we're at on that. Um, there's all sorts of ways of getting background colors. The label itself has a background, so you could just put a background on that. Or you could make a container with a background. You could make a rectangle and add this thing to the rectangle and tile that. Uh, another way here I'll show you is to make a tile of new rectangle. And this one would be 300 minus the spacing, I guess, 30, and uh, the, the height. Do we have a height? No, let's give it a height two. Call, this is then row size, and we'll make give it a height of 200. That means we'll put the 200 here. We can specify a color, um, yellow, and we'll do the same tiling that's here, almost. We don't need the true on the end because we're actually going to See, we don't have an array of things. Basically, don't put the true if you don't have an array. So what this will be doing is cloning those things rather than pulling from the array, which is what the true says. So we'll be cloning those things at the same uh, location. Sorry about that, that test. Uh, that has to be centered. Dot center. No, dot center. You'd think I'd be good at making a dot, wouldn't you? All right, so there they are uh, as with backgrounds now, in a sense, if you so desire. We can make those different colors too. Um, let's, uh, well, let's work on making the columns a different size. So what you would do, actually, let's start with the color. It might be of interest to see that. I'm not sure what would happen. Let's set a color to red and see how many things go red. Test. Okay. So not much went red. We tiled, oh, because this was said, said it was yellow. So we'll take away, uh, the yellow is overriding any styles that we're setting, test. So kind of good. We definitely got the rectangles to go red, but the label also has a color and it went red and the label inside here went red and the label of that went red because they've all got colors. So in other words, we don't just want to set every color, everything with a color to red, we want the rectangles, so that would be rectangle. This is how Zim style works. You say, hey, rectangles, please make them color red. So now we test and note that the labels are no longer red because we've only said to set the styles for the rectangle to be red. Okay. What we might want to do is if we um, set a series here of colors, uh, this is why I'm doing the colors first because colors are very uh, noticeable or colors are very colorful. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going to go red. Uh, well, let's not go red. Let's start with green, yellow, orange. Okay, so in theory, this should set each rectangle as it's made to green, yellow, and red. And so we test that, uh, but it doesn't seem to work. So what's happening here is a single rectangle is being made, and then the tile is cloning it. So when that single rectangle gets made, it picks the first thing in the series, green. And that's why we've got a cloned version of all of those greens. Unless we tell it to delay 
pick. So this is a quite an unusual thing, obviously. First of all, doing series and styles is, is pretty unusual. Um, the only reason this isn't working right away, just like this, is because the rectangles are sort of one removed. Um, it's inside, so we want to delay the picking of these things until the tile actually uses them. And so that looks like this. Delay, pick, colon, true. So it's not often that you have to do that, and it's a little bit unusual, but there we go. Now it's tiling um, just fine. We're going to run into the same thing when we use the tile and set the call size as well. So if we just set a series here of 300, uh, say 400, make, you see how the middle one is a bit cramped? These ones have some padding on them. It's got maybe too much padding on them. Maybe we want to make this 400 and we want to make that one 200. So let's do that, 200, like so. So we've just set a series, but the problem is the first tile that gets made will pick a call size of 300 and that tile will be 300 in call size. The next tile that get, gets made will will pick the next one and it will be 400. And you'll be scratching your head going, Arr, what is going on? Okay, so what we need to do is delay the pick here on this style too. Delay uh, pick colon true like that, comma. And then what happens is the whole tile will get this, this, and this, and then I guess, will this work out? No, because the widths are wrong here. All right, so the widths then, width <coughs> will be a series. Uh, we won't want to give the width there. We'll say no. As a matter of fact, why don't we just do it all with style? So we'll do a height of 200 here, and that way we don't have to put anything in the rectangle. Boop. And then this is a series of basically the same sizes, so minus the minus the 30 there. So minus 30 on that. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, maybe. <laughs> All right, and let's test. So there we've done it, and now we have a rectangle that is um, nicely showing there, and that would be a 300 rectangle. Here's a 400 rectangle, well, almost a 400, 400 minus 30, and there that is centered in there, and that's centered in there. So that looks a little bit odd. First of all, uh, if we didn't have a backing rectangle, it would be a lot easier. <laughs> Test, <laughs> there we go. So we've, we've just done what we set out to do with uh, the series of columns there and then we tile our things so those get let's um let's tighten that up if we want say we wanted 200 on that test so what's happening is is that's getting smaller in there and we can go to exactly 300 i'm not sure what we want but we want the label way the heck over there we could go 400 on the label test and that pushes the label over there we also have a line center going on if we wanted it further we could align right etc and test, and there it is aligned right. Oh, uh, note that the label text got aligned right as well, so um, that's not too good. What do we do with that? I wonder if we can just align right the um, tile. So let's try it. Tile, colon, squiggly brackets, align right. So the align right is on the tile only, test. And now the tile is aligned right, presumably, but not this button. So that's good. Remember, anything you put out in a style, oh, isn't this a nice explore? Not only have we been exploring tiling, but we're also exploring styling. Do you like that? Okay, cheesy. Uh, right, what were we talking about? Uh, dare we turn the backings back on and see what this looks like? <laughs> dare we, dare we, and test. Okay. Well, that looks a little bit awkward here because what have we got? We told, I, I think our uh, widths weren't right. Okay, so 200, 200, this is 300, copy 300, and 400, copy 400, uh, test. There we go. 
That's better. So we've got an align right on a 200, and you can see that we're actually um, going outside of that. If we wanted to stay inside of that, we talked about it last time, you could take the button and say dot size, S-I-Z, no E on the end, and take these same sizes. Well, actually, it'd probably be that size right there, wouldn't it? Take these sizes and just size everything to those sizes. Do you want to see what that looks like if we were to do that? Um, I'm not sure if we could style the widths of all those things to, to make it match this or not. <laughs> it's a little bit silly. That was 300 and this one. Oh no, we're going to size the label to that big. It's going to look awful. And test. Okay, so now we basically um, sized these items inside here to be that. What would happen if we didn't have, obviously we've got 30s sitting around everywhere. We should really, if we were truly going to do this, we might want to store a variable here uh, for the spacing or something like that. But if we didn't have any spacing, then we would see this. We still need that comment. A zero there, a zero here. Oh. <laughs> Silly us. So here's what it would look like with no spacing. And we've got a certain size, certain size, and certain size on there. Nice, huh? Hey, let's make this look really cool. Oh, yeah. And if we don't quite want that size, we can take a percentage. So times 0.9, that's percentage wise. Test. We don't want right aligned. We would want center aligned on that probably so where'd that go center test cool huh just make it 0.8 so remember coding is very easy we don't need we don't need percent signs like css does and stuff that turns things into not numbers which are hard to work with we can just go times 0.8 and test and there we have a 10 percent padding on that. If you want more, if you want more, give us more. That's a 20% padding. So if you were looking how to do padding, we just we just did it. All right. Um, good. Now, how to stretch that out? Like I said, it's just assigning a width to it. And uh, once it does the width, I can't remember it, it starts proportioning the <laughs> I don't even want to try it. I don't want to try it. Come on, don't make me try it. Uh, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm not sure exactly how to do the width. Uh, but if that's the tile, let's try a width of width, which is the stage width, and just see what happens. Hard to say. I mean, this did go right out to the edge. <laughs> uh, it looks like something's happened with the rectangle sizes but if we didn't have the rectangles in there I'm not sure exactly what's going on with the rectangle sizes but uh, then we would very much say yeah it appears to have just stretched it out to the width of that which of course would uh, continue to do so all right uh, I don't want to do that though. I don't want to stretch it out to the width I'm going back to this nice colorful one that looked really cool and where was that width? Right here. Test. And where'd they go? Oh, they're gone. They're missing. Gone. Test. Okay. Very nice. I am Dr. Abstract. Is there anything else that we needed to show you with respect to the tile? Uh, we didn't really show you how to loop through things and gain access to tiles. One thing to remember is a tile is a container. So it's basically that's now just the same as a container that has three things in it. Okay, well, I mean, there's a backing tile too, but that's just a, a container. If you do things like start um, looping through and removing things, if they're hitting, because some often will hit test against a tile, just remember to loop backwards so you don't mess up the, uh, the loop numbers there. That's not a Zim thing. That's in anything where you're deleting from an array, loop backwards through the array. And I think that's good. I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a Zim Explore, part two of uh, exploring laying out with tiles. 
If you have any questions, then you're welcome to find us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there and don't be shy. All right. Cheers. Have a good day or night. <laughs> well, the last uh, Zim Explorer, I didn't get to finish off that because the Explorer music was uh, ending. So I missed, missed all that stuff. So I made sure to get every single one of them in there. But I, I'm glad you're here, here with us. Okay, cheers.